What's up everyone? Thanks for joining me again this week. Uh, today I want to talk about conditionally returning rows of results based on the results of another query. So while I normally prefer to format my result set my data uh, in my downstream application or my reporting services layer, sometimes it's just a requirement that I have to do my formatting in the query itself. And sometimes that formatting requires me to return certain numbers of rows or not return rows based on some criteria. So what I want to go over today is four different ways that you can control the output of your queries to either show or don't show results based on some conditional business logic you may have. And just for some quick setup of our base query, what we have here is uh, a query that is just returning a, you know, a one based on whether the seconds portion of our timestamp is divisible by two. So if we take that query and then put it inside the from as a derived table of another query, um, that other query in the select statement is now we're doing some conditional logic to see if that seconds portion of the timestamp is also divisible by three. Now obviously this isn't the best way to determine whether a number is divisible by two and three, but for the purposes of this query, I wanted to set something up where we would be dependent on our derived table query to then control the output rows. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So our setup now is that our derived table query is only gonna return a row when the seconds part of our timestamp is divisible by two. When that subquery does have data to return, our outer query then is going to basically give us a conditional one or zero depending on if that seconds portion of the timestamp again is divisible by three as well. And so one scenario you might run into is where you always wanna return a row. Our derived table isn't always gonna return a record, but let's say we always wanted our final outer query to return a row, what can we do? So the way I typically like doing this is to union all a placeholder value that I wanna return when my actual query doesn't have any results. When I union all that additional query, I like getting a column, uh, here it's called order precedence, which will give me uh, an idea of which row should be displayed. So when my original query does have data, I want that data to be displayed. But when that query doesn't have data, we want to go to my secondary query. And so if we just add a top one and order on that order precedence column, what will happen is SQL Server will only return our extra placeholder value record when our original query doesn't have any rows at all. So this is really nice for when you have a business reason to always have a row of data output from a query, even when your original query may not necessarily do that on its own. Just union all your value, do a top one, you'll be good to go. So another scenario you might run into is where you want to return a record when our, uh, when our value being output is set to one, but don't output any records when that row is equal to zero. So using something like a case statement or the if function uh, is really good when you want to conditionally show a value right within a row, but that row always exists. But if you want to conditionally show or hide an, an entire row, uh, that becomes a little trickier. One way I like doing this is just interjoining to another uh, constant value that basically I do an inequality join so that when my record that I want to hide uh, shows up, it gets filtered out with that inner join. So basically only my, my records where the value is one, they're gonna get uh, passed through because the inner join is gonna uh, correctly join. And when my records of zero are shown, they're gonna get filtered out because they're not gonna match my inner join criteria. So a little bit more complicated, but hopefully you could see the logic there. We're using the inner join to filter out uh, the row of data depending on whether we wanna show it or not. All right, this next example is I think the trickiest one of the bunch. Uh, it's basically we are gonna be inverting the results of our original query. So meaning when a value is either one or zero that's getting returned from our query, we wanna output no rows. Um, and when no rows are coming back from our original query, we wanna force a row to output. So this one's a little trickier, right? But it's, it's essentially a combination of those first two examples that we looked at. First, what we do is we do our union all top one trick to always return a record um, regardless of whether our original query has a record or not. 
Um, we do add a placeholder value though of negative one, so we know whether there should have been or should not have been a row from that query result. What we do then is then do the same trick we did in the second example where we do an inner join to then filter out the records that we don't want. Now if we're seeing a negative one being returned from our first you know, subquery, uh, we want to keep that because we know that negative one represents a null record, right? Um, versus where if it was returning a one or a zero, um, we don't want to keep that, so we filter it out using our inner join. So it's a little tricky. Uh, it's def it definitely makes for a big query, uh, which is why, you know, if you do this in your application, your reporting layer, it's probably a lot easier to do it there than in your SQL query, but if you need to be able to do it in the SQL query directly, it's possible to do. And finally, the last scenario I want to talk about is where if you have a query and it returns rows or maybe it doesn't return rows, you just always want it to never return rows. Honestly, I'm not really sure what the business case for that is of why you would never want a query to return results, but I figured just for completeness, I would include it here as part of this video. Enforcing your query to not return any results is probably the easiest one to code for. Um, all you have to do is add a condition that will never be true. So you just add something like where one equals zero, uh, that'll always be false and it'll force SQL Server not to return any rows. So thanks for tuning in this week. Hopefully now you feel a lot more comfortable with being able to control the output of a query uh, based on some conditional logic. If you're not already subscribed, please press that subscribe button so I show up in your YouTube feeds and you'll, you'll know when I release new videos and I'll see you next time. Thanks.